All right. So, Michael. HBCU. Talk- HBCU. <laughs> that's, the fir- that's the first thing I want to talk about. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, how many of you guys went to HBCUs for undergrad? Two of us out of my siblings. Two of us went to HBCUs. So, Morehouse and Spellman. Was it you and your twin sister that went to Morehouse and Spellman? It was. It was yes. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Got you. And where did, they, where did the other two go? Our, my Fallon, the, my middle sister, she went to USC. University of Southern California in Los Angeles. And Megan, my youngest sister, she went to Pepperdine University undergrad. Got you, got you. And you went to Pepperdine for law school, right? Yes, actually all four of us did. Oh, really? Okay, okay. <laughs> now, what is the connection with Pepperdine? I'm just curious now. You know, it's, yeah, it is interesting. Actually, my mother, my aunt, my aunt Crystal uh, Gore, she, she's my mother's sister, a younger sister of hers. He actually went to Pepperdine undergrad many years ago. So we always kind of heard about this Pepperdine school uh, growing up. So she actually is the original person that kind of broke through that door. And then as we came of age, uh, I mean, there's no secret Pepperdine has the most beautiful campus in the world, right on the ocean. Yeah, that's what I hear. On the mountains of Malibu. So a lot of people want to go there um, just based on the location. However, Pepperdine happens to be an incredible school. I mean, they're the the diversity, the caliber of the staff and the professors is top notch. Um, and of course, the environment can't can't hurt either. It's just it's a nice, relaxing, beautiful environment to learn in. But I I, I can't say enough about the staff and um, actually our uh, my old uh, torch teacher back in law school. Uh, Professor Jim Gash, he just became the president of the entire university. So he just got sworn in this year. Really excited about that. He's an incredible leader. Uh, and he he went to Pepperdine, Pepperdine Law and all that stuff back in the day, his kids and wife. So, you know, we, we, we although that we have our own kind of Pepperdine legacy going, um, you know, those that we actually learned with are, are deeply rooted in Pepperdine. Too. It's truly a family. It's a very, it's a very deeply rooted family. I encourage everybody uh, out there uh, applying for undergrad or graduate school to consider Pepperdine University. Cool. Well, that's great. But I want to talk about Morehouse and Spelman. Yes. Let's talk. Let's talk about Morehouse and Spelman. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So um, let's talk about Morehouse. I can't even talk. Let's talk about the house. Let's talk about the house. You know, right, let's talk about Morehouse. I'm talk about Morehouse. Yeah, I'm a true Morehouse man. So, you know, we have to get, get down and deep with that. How did Morehouse shape you to the men that you are today and prepare you to run your company uh, uh, that you're running as a family? Yeah, that's a great question. And I remember coming home after my freshman year for the summer. And, you know, I, I went to my mom. Something kind of something came over me. I just went to I went up to her and said, Mom, you know, I I feel like I'm a man now, you know. And, and, it, and she was like, hmm, okay. And that's what it does. See, when you're coming out of high school, you're still, you're still a teenager. You know, you're still young, you're still immature. So for African-Americans and, and even beyond um, our, our state line, our country lines, you know, cause Morehouse attracts people from uh, all over the diaspora. But, um, when you, it, in my opinion, could really consider a HBCU because what HBCUs do, like a Morehouse, Spelman, Clark, Hampton, Howard, all of them out there, um, they they nurture you, they 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 challenge you and they nurture you so that you don't feel like you're just a number. You know, you, when you go into a bigger school too early, too soon, you just kind of become a number. You can kind of get lost in it, and you're not getting that nurturing. And what the nurturing does, it's actually a kind of a a systematic approach to taking you from teenage mind to adult, like mature mind. And what Morehouse also did for me, it taught me how to, and my colleagues, how to work with the world, not to hate the world or, you know, have uh, and, and fuel those insecurities that we might have uh, grew, grown up with, or even through our own DNA from our past. Um, it, 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 it also teaches you about, you know, how to be a leader. Another thing, it's, I mean, they had classes in Morehouse that were required, like for example, etiquette class. Like you, you can't even graduate without passing etiquette class. So they taught us, 
every spoon, every fork, every knife, every glass, the names of them and what they were used for. Those are the practical things that you actually use uh, throughout your life. And people will sit there and watch you to see if you even know what a salad fork is or a fish knife and, and, and this glass uh, for wine or water or red or what, you know, all those things we, we use all the time. Um, another great thing that I really uh, in, enjoyed with Morehouse and I use all the time is just like us speaking right now is they, they train you how to uh, conduct presentations and structure slideshows. They, they also teach you and train you how to uh, do public speaking. Public speaking is, if I'm not mistaken, either the, the number one or two most feared yep. thing in the world. So uh, that nurturing, going back to the nurturing kind of approach uh, with the HBCUs, that, that's the, they know that. And that's why they really focus on those really foundational skills because they know you're going to use them. And people, they also know people are going to, they're what they know that people are watching us. They're watching to see if you have any type of class, skill set, if you know how to speak, if you know how to present. Those things are, those things have done wonders for me in the business world. As you can see, I mean, I, I still have a youthful look. I'm 41 years old. So when I'm in a boardroom, they're like, they're sitting there barely listening to me because I look like I'm, you know, 18, 20, 25 years old. So, uh, but, you know, by presenting uh, in a certain, you know, articulate, educated way in, in that manner, and, and, and you know, it, it, it kind of diffuses that uh, assumption and, and then it's impactful, you know, uh, to, to the actual purpose of whatever you're trying to achieve in that presentation. Basically, you're just trying, you're trying to get the deal done, right? So, all those type of skills with HBCUs, the social, you know, yes, we have top notch uh, professors in the HBCUs. Uh, Morehouse in particular has uh, arguably, you know, some of the best in the world there. Um, but the social component is just as important and they know that, you know, there, there's a reason why those schools in AUC are all next to each other. They want us to socialize with each other because when you get out of school, it, a big percentage of business is a social component. Example, networking. Networking events is everything. When you go to uh, conferences, conferences is what where deals are done. But a lot of times you're you know you're moving around, uh, looking at different uh, displays and booths and things of that nature. But a lot of times you don't really get a moment to really get to know some of these potential clients or or maybe future partners. Uh, until you're at the networking events thereafter. How do you conduct yourself? How do you hold your glass? Your, how do you fold your napkin? How do you present yourself properly? How, if you don't drink, you, you still should get a, a, a cranberry soda. You know, it's, 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 it's all those different things on the social component. You may, you may end up meeting your future uh, spouse uh, at, at these HBCUs. Uh, did, you meet your future sp did you meet your spouse at, uh, at Morehouse? I didn't meet my future spouse while at Morehouse. I met her uh, probably about four years later in DC at a black tie event at the, I think it was NABOB, National Association of Black like Broadcasters kind of event gotcha. I'm yep. there, but, but, but check this out. She is a graduate of Hampton. Uh-oh. So, <laughs> Morehouse is Hampton United. And uh, I always heard about the, the you know, how, the beautiful people up there in Hampton. Um, I didn't get a chance to get up there, but but as soon as I found out she was from Hampton, I, it was an immediate like, oh wow, this is great. You know, that means we have something in common, and uh, and we you know we we dated. I and and then we got married. We've been married ten years. We have three beautiful children, two daughters, and a son, all birthed from uh, two HBCU alumni. So it's a beautiful thing.